couple of you asked it for some uh, some time with me, so I said, okay, let's just do it, and we'll try and do it. So we didn't do it ten times in a row with ten people. I just thought we would could do something. So I'm uh, it's been a very busy month of May, very different months of May and April for all the coaches, uh, assistant coaches, and coaches around the country right now as the as the calendar of our of when we work, how we work evolves. But we were extremely busy May. Um, and uh, I'm going to be home this weekend. It'll be like it will be the first weekend home, probably since the uh, in August, last August. So it's it's really been a uh, uh, just a busy time, but very productive. I've learned a lot, and uh, we are really excited about this roster we have for next year. I mean, really excited. So that's it. I'll take your I'll I'll grab any questions anybody has from anyone. You talk first about the, the mutual decisions. Uh, yeah, it was my our, my, my uh, job. I think our job is not to is give them as much information as possible. Give them the probabilities involved, and then uh, embrace their decision. Sometimes we 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 may um, look at what their reaction sometimes and have to maybe say again, all right, you do understand the probabilities here. And then once we, we're sure that they understand all, all the implications of a decision either way, right, then you just gotta step back and embrace it because it's not gonna work if you're forcing people either way, either you know out or in. So I just, we did that and really satisfied the way it all came out. John, how does this compare? I mean, you've had, you've had a few guys leave early you know, during mm -hmm. the past handful of years. How did this kind of compare when you were when you <clears throat> excuse me when you were talking to them as far as you, you mentioned the probabilities and you know staying or going was it was well, DJ very, and Mo a little no, bit tougher? That's a great question. It's very very different because of the testing the waters aspect now. That I think uh, when when the, the guys if we start all the way back to Manny Harris but uh, Dar Darius Morris all those guys they uh, we were just dealing with. Uh, speculation, evaluation reports, they weren't actually going to work out and meet with pro teams. So what this was involved, because the agents are out of it, uh, we, are in, we are the contact uh, team for every NBA team. We talk with all 38 NBA teams probably at, at one time or another. Between Saudi Washington and I both did it. So it was very different. It was like, I think the Pro teams are used to, used to working with guys to clear. There's agents to work with, and everybody's doing their thing. Uh, we're we're used to all right. They're either in or out, and then you go on and you recruit your next team. This is a different deal. This is a month of uh, of us being the the conduit to information. So it was very different. How did if I could flip that? How does that affect you because in the past you know you knew okay they declared they declared now you have that month waiting period and yeah I, not it, knowing. for some reason it didn't really concern me a great deal uh, I just figured knowing that every year that we've had a scholarship left over virtually almost every year we've had a scholarship left over and then it's like there'll be guys out there if they both go or one goes or we you know this year we had 11 guys on scholarship or 10 12 guys on scholarships and, and one of them Right was ineligible. Now we were injury free, which was really important. But uh, it was what? What are you going to do? I'm not going to take their scholarship away, so you, you can't even fret about it. And we couldn't. We, we there were some candidates out there that we would say this is a possibility, right? But you got to be patient. We're not giving their scholarships away. Uh, I think Mo said uh, that you kind of had like a list of reasons to stay to, yeah. to present to him and talk about. Um, did you have the same for DJ? Yeah, we gave them the exact same thing. There, there was data that you could, it, there was different data that's different. It was, it was not in the list of, list of states. It was, it was the information that we had gathered. It was the probabilities, the feedback, and we gave, and we gave that to them. So uh, Mo, saw, Mo, Mo probably interpreted that as a list of reasons to stay, a probability, and uh, DJ saw that differently. So. It's, it is exactly what it is there. And when and how did you learn from DJ that, that this was going to be his, how did that play out? Uh, we've been talking the whole time. Uh, we talked in, in the, at the combine. 
uh, we talked again, and then Sadi and I flew out there on Monday. I flew out and back in the same day just to sit down with him and his mom and make sure that eye to eye everybody understood everything. And then uh, he made his decision uh, Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. He made, made the final decision. So they called and told you. Yeah. That that was yeah. Yeah. Okay. We saw him well, take a jump first year to this year. Where will he get gained the most in this coming year? All I know is going into it, he has the right attitude. That he, he, I, when a guy has, uh, you know, Karis was in that situation, Glenn and Mitch were in this situation, I think Tim, Trey were all in this situation where they probably could have gone out, and uh, but they decided to uh, remain in Michigan. Uh, I sense that same, even more, probably even more enthusiasm for coming back from Mo right now. He wants to be more of a leader. Really values his experience here. He values the degree from Michigan, and he's coming from a different mindset. You know, he could have gone pro right away. A lot of his peers that he plays with in Germany, they don't, they don't go to the United States to play. So he's, he's got some a real uh, vision there. He's young, and uh, he, he's had, he's been here two years. He just, he just loves it here. And, D, and DJ did as well. DJ just felt that they, they, they're coming from two different situations, and DJ felt this was a good time to go. What kind of feedback? Teams yeah, I, I can't. It's all confidential. They won't. I'm, I'm not supposed to divulge any of those things. But you know, some of the some of the draft. Um, are you talking about what he has to do? Or, yeah. 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 I would talk about that. That both of them need to get stronger. Uh, both of them need to continue to have consistencies to their game. Um, that that was the biggest thing. Get stronger. Just skill level, skill development. The whole things that we do. I think I think that the, the, the NBA teams are in a bind because I think they they probably all the gentlemen wish every almost every player would just stay in longer in college longer so they could get a better read on who they are but they're forced to make some really crazy decisions on 18 20 year old kids that there isn't enough information to make really informed decisions their jobs are on the line too so uh, you know, that's a general consensus about most general managers and, and the, the directors of scouting, et cetera, that all these kids should stay longer. But the fact is they're not, so they adapt. What's your assessment of the four position without? Uh, there's a the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, it was right. we recruited Isaiah Livers for this, but Duncan is, you know, I, I saw Duncan the next day excited for him, that this is a great opportunity for him. And we, knowing DJ's emergence, uh, playing the four was DJ, or a uh, Duncan would back up there probably next year, but DJ was here, but play more, play some two or three. We needed him to, to do what he did this year, but probably more, because Zach would be gone. Uh, but now, uh, that's I'm really comfortable with that. We where we where we lose in some areas, we could gain in some areas. So and, and I think uh, Duncan understands right now that he just can't stand in the corner and get open because they aren't going to leave him open. How do you get open? You know, he used to watch Kyle Korver over and over and over again. Yeah, he stands in the corner, but at other times he's running 100 miles an hour around the court to get open. And so he understands that, and he's uh, he's he's driven right now. Duncan is so driven right now, this, it, and this just added to it. I think playing two bigs as you had was an yeah. unusual thing, that, yeah. at least since you've been at Michigan, because he was so yeah. tall. Now does that does this look more yeah, like it, one of your it, other teams? It, I think it depends Duncan? on the situation, but Mo. Uh, Mo, Mo has, he, just remember, I think he, he was playing there for a little bit his freshman year. Mm -hmm. um, it, the, the issue will always be, well, how is the other team? You are who you can guard. And can either one of those bigs, uh, any of those three bigs, guard on the perimeter? And I do not think at this time the two freshmen or rising sophomores can do that. Uh, Mo has a chance there, but that's still a new thing. But. Uh, DJ was just learning to really do it at the end of last year. It, it is difficult for a big kid to chase, and more people play small than they play big. So you could dominate them with twos, but they could they could kill you with threes. So it's a, a difficult choice. John, was it? It's a little bittersweet <clears throat> knowing. I mean, with DJ and Mo, you had one. Of, I mean, they're arguably one of the best tandems in the country. It's a little bittersweet, and I know that you. You were talking about Mo and DJ saying that they weren't anywhere near as good as they could get. Another, is it fair to yeah. think that maybe you were wondering what DJ could do next year here? 
We've been wondering that for a long time. I mean, we had a pretty good team a few years ago that, that the same thing happened to. And it's, I would say it's part of the, it's not, our numbers are extraordinary compared to other teams. Uh, for a team that does not uh, recruit, I should say, that we're not depending all our success on one and done. We're, we're, our success is, is depending on can we get good players that will develop on going on the upside, can, can really play. But given that, our numbers right now are extraordinary for this. Uh, DJ goes in the first round, which we hope that happens. Um, that, that's, a, that's a big number if you give, given the history of Michigan. Uh, and then, but just the league, Wisconsin's had one guy go pro early in this entire, since I've been here. Michigan State's had two. This, you, I, I've lost count. What does that say? I mean, and along those lines, I mean, what does that say? You, st you guys, you're not relying on the one and done, the the big time five star guy all the time, but you are putting guys into the NBA. Well, yeah, and we're, what I really like right now is like Stauskas and Levert, uh, 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 Tim Hardaway in particular are really excelling right now. I mean, they're playing really, they're playing well, and, um, and I, I wouldn't give up on the guys either that are, you know, Glenn and, and Trey. Um, I wouldn't give up on them. They're young. They're still young. They're going to continue to make progress. So it's, it's not just getting them drafted. It's, it's can they can they go and can they have success there? And uh, it just it's 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 a good thing to have. It's a good thing to have. But you know we've uh, that's I've always thought this that you could do you could do this if you had the right kids, the right attitude, and uh, so. So you've lost count. Have you gotten any more comfortable with it? I think it's it's when you're calculating your recruiting, and you say, hey, we got Mo and we got DJ. They averaged three points last year. I'm not thinking one year. I'm thinking they're both. DJ's a five-year player, right? And Mo's definitely over four. And now now there was a there was a real possibility we could have lost both of them. And so I do, I I don't expect anything to be for sure. You know, you just keep going. It's but it's. It's like we went with the injury bug, right? You, you didn't have guys going getting injured, and all of a sudden we got a bunch injured. Now you didn't have guys going pro, now you have a bunch of guys with this opportunity. So I just coach the same way, fretful that you know things could happen, but confident that it always works out. You know, in, in roster planning, you have a, a board, but next you're year, sneaking in my office, that, is that what you're that. saying? Well, you're <laughs> coming in with the janitors at night? <laughs> <laughs> but somebody, yeah, somebody's out there. But go ahead. Four years out, you know, yeah. you know what, it would, what it yeah. would look like. I mean, do is that even a thing? I actually have it on my legal pad. Yeah, yeah, and I just, I, I, that's on the back page of that hardcover part in the back, and then I just keep crossing people out and put them in and, or go get a new legal pad. <laughs> but it's on the cardboard part and the depth chart. It just keeps changing. and. Uh, the only kind of, you know, it, so it, I thought when when uh, when Darius Morris went pro a few years ago, and we had this young freshman coming in, Dre Burke. I, what are we going to do? We're going to have a freshman point guard, and we won the championship. And then when Tim and Trey went pro, we said, oh, "Man, we're this, that's a big loss." And all of a sudden, we won the championship. And now this year, we back winning the championship with. I thought we had residual effects still from not being able to recruit those positions, and then they were gone. In in the. the in the last couple of years, but we were coming out of it, that cycle. When so you, I think we're still coming. We're, we're still coming out of that cycle in a very positive direction. I'm sorry. Yes. When when you are you know when you have those guys who are NBA talent, you know this guy's going to play in the league someday. In the development of those players, what do you foster or you want to foster most in those players to prepare them for the professional level? With the guys that we see that have the yeah, the, the guys have that, the potential, yeah, the guys or even a surprise guy. I'm not coaching them any different than I've coached the guys at Lemoyne. I mean, as far as just it's it's so much about skill development, <coughs> fundamentals, making the right plays, um, just seeing the game uh, offensively and defensively, trying to just increase their skill level. You know, sometimes the guys' rating, maybe all going in, these guys, they might, the high school, maybe all about what high school they played at, what type of visibility they got. Who their coach was, you know, who their AAU team was. That's it. Doesn't have anything to do with talent compared to somebody else. If you, if you follow this stuff, so we're doing the same thing. We're just we're not saying, oh, we got to coach him differently. He's got NBA potential. It's the same thing. John, what uh, kind of role do you envision Jaron Simmons playing next year? And how uh, we're excited about that. Yeah, he is really. Um, 
I, I, I'm, more, I'm very excited about his personality and, and his desire to lead. Uh, it's very hard for him to leave Ohio University. Uh, he has got great coaches down there. Um, and, and it's with a lot of the mid-majors that are having this happen to him, and I don't like it at all. But if the fact is, uh, if Jerron doesn't come here, he ends up probably somewhere else in the Big Ten. So uh, he's just fundamentally so sound. But I, and, and like I said, we he'll he'll be here this summer. But I, just as a person, I just wanted to coach the kid after spending an hour with him of just the leadership, the desire to win. Um, I can't even tell you who he reminds me of. Uh, he, he just is. I I I have a sense he's going to be have a really special addition to this team, not just because of talent level just because of his desire. He's not played the NCAA tournament. He would love to be an NBA player. He sees that uh, there's a plan here for him to do both. And uh, he's excited, we're excited. Cases that we see a roster addition before fall? Yeah, anything could happen, couldn't it? Anything could happen. So we, uh, we have one. Um, one of my bigger concerns right now is finding walk-ons to be on the scout team. I mean, we've, we've, <coughs> lost, we've lost two great guys in Sean and, uh, and Andrew Dockage. Uh, Brent Hibbins is testing his waters to see if there's he wants to play. So coming back to Michigan is an option, but he also could go somewhere else. That, that is an important part of our team, is that scout team. And we lost two, like, two of the, they're, they would compare to Esso Akune and and Josh Bartlestein is for what they added to this team, and those guys gave us a lot. You put a lot on the point guard's shoulders. How are you, or what makes you confident that Jerron can be adjusted and ready to go? Well, it's not just hinged on him. I mean, mm -hmm. he, we have, you know, Xavier has improved a lot this year, and we're extremely high on Eli Brooks. So, um, but Jerron has four years of experience, you know, between Houston and playing at Ohio that he's been well coached at both spots. So he's obviously getting used to his new teammates, a different system. Uh, but I'll, I know one thing, he's extraordinary in the ball screen, and we, we like to do it too. And he's, he wants to win, and we like guys that prioritize winning over their own stats. John, you guys, especially in all that Big Ten tournament run late in the season, you guys had the, the it factor mm -hmm. going. Derek was a big part of that, mm -hmm. so kind of piggybacking point guard position. I mean, Derek, Derek brought a lot. I mean, is it something where you expect, maybe can't expect a guy to, to do that, but, you know, kind of carry? Because I remember you talking about the, the, like Derek's hard-nosed attitude and, yeah. and that he finally realized that he was, right. like, the best player. Yeah, and, and our hope is you don't know who has that. You don't know who the outlier. Derek was a bit of an outlier, wasn't he? Because he was doing, he was just being this really good guard and became a great guard. It, you, you think or you, the outlier is the guy, all of a sudden somebody's going to come off the bench and score 20 in a game. No, the outlier sometimes is the guy that has just been good becomes great. And that's what Derek did. And so I, I have no idea, no idea, and I'm not going to put too much pressure on All I know is we have a lot of flexibility in that backcourt and, and in the front court. Do you have an outlier back there? I, I hope there's outliers, but I'm not, I'm not going to. They, they emerge by themselves. I don't predict them. They, they emerge by themselves. Otherwise, they wouldn't be outliers. Right. The amount of time last year spent um, coaching up defense, coaching up attitude, it seemed like. Yeah. You know, literally showing pictures of dogs and stuff. Uh, <laughs> where, do, uh, where do Charles and Jerron fit in keeping that <clears throat> attitude? Yeah, I hope Charles has the same attitude about defense that he had playing for us this year. Because he was a he was a pain in the neck to play against. And I would literally draw plays that he had never seen before that looked like our regular plays, and he would steal the ball. He just feels the game really well. So, and and Jerron, as opposed to why we decided to go with a fifth-year guy, is that there's things that, uh, as a, as a fifth-year player defensively, that still young guys are still a year or two away from. And he should not be. He's played for really good coaches. So now Chet Charles. Austin has the ability to block shots. I think with the arc right now to have him and John both ability to block shots because uh, Mo is not a shot blocker is really huge as well. Because if you can't take charges like you like you used to, you can still do it. But having that ability is really going to help our defense. With Jerron, did you have to have a conversation with Xavier about that? 
Yeah, you know, I told, I told, yeah, I told Eli, I told Xavier, I told him ahead of the box when it started to, uh, we started recruiting. We we made a decision, and it said this is something that uh, Mo Wagner and DJ Wilson had about the same freshman year you had, maybe even not even as good. And look, look where they are now. You just got to be patient, and you got to work at your game. Was there any concern with how how he would take that? Um, I think there's concern with every guy, every player all the time. You got 13 guys. Everybody's used to starting. But all I know is that we have a we have 12 guys right now that are really hungry to. They they love what happened last year and the the young guys. I mean, this freshman class is good. I really think that they're probably uh, going to be able to play earlier because we don't have all five starters returning. Now we're missing three starters in our backup center. I mean. A lot of reason those freshmen didn't play last year is because they didn't need to play. We didn't need them that much. Uh, and now we're going to need them. So between the, the sophomores and the freshmen and the red shirts, there's a great opportunity, but there's going to be competition now. What, is, what are the things that Isaiah needs to do to be able to be in there and be? He's very much like DJ, actually. Uh, he block shots. Um, he can really shoot. And he's, he's probably more as skilled as anybody that we've had coming in that's, that's that size coming in. But he's, he can rebound at a higher level. He's got to rebound at a higher level. You know, it seems like uh, sometimes we, it seems like we recruit guys that can't rebound. And uh, then they become rebounders. But it is something that he's got to rebound better. He knows it. And the, one, one of those things is be in position to be in position. Just get in there and the ball will fall into your hands. That would be the biggest thing, to be strong. Every freshman that we've had that did not play either was, it was, there was a lot of depth in his position or he did not he did not play tough enough or understand defense. That it comes down to that. Is it helpful that he and Duncan are different players at that spot or is it, um, or is it that a, a disadvantage to you guys, do you think, that they're not similar? Yeah, I mean, there's there's some striking similarities there because they're both big time jump shooters. I mean, and they probably, uh, I would even say with Isaiah, he may prefer the jump shot over the drive, probably too much for his size. So that's something that he's going to work at, and he knows he, he's realized this. But his skill level to pass and play and do some things is really extraordinary. What were your kind of thoughts of having a a senior from another place who would kind of come in and try to walk into a leadership role yeah. but is still a newcomer, that kind yeah. of dynamic of how that actually plays out. It's brand new for us and we thought very much about it. And if I had any doubt in our visits with him that he was not going to be a good locker room guy, we wouldn't, I, we, I wouldn't care if he was, you know, even a better player than he is. He's a good player. He's all MAC first team. So, but when I'm, I met and spent time with him, I, there was no doubt. And on his official visit here, he, he clicked with our players really well. Was there ever a point to, like maybe, because you, you had talked obviously to a lot of different guys, you know, as you were trying to figure out the grad transfer thing, and you offered him and he took it. I mean, was there ever thought of waiting until the draft thing was over with no, these guys? And, no, we went, we went all in with him knowing we okay. had that scholarship and we, because, we, um, what I found out is having somebody in the fifth year to transfer, it's, it's more of that. It's, they have to be accepted at a certain school here, you know, in, in, in one of the you know, graduate schools, and there's more to it. Oh, so you had to do it earlier? Yeah, yeah, so we really, we had to commit to him 100%, and I made that decision rather than, uh, and he, he wanted to make that decision. And, uh, the, you know, when you transfer, there's NCAA waivers involved, and every, once everything was passed through, we were really happy, but we were we'd be out there looking right now if if it hadn't worked out when it did. But it did. by that point, that meant you closed the door on any 2017 recruits right. who That's you were right. talking to. That's right. And that was a conscious That's decision. Right. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We felt that was a huge need for us. It is to just have a little bit more experience in the fact court for next year, to, so that the the young boys would have met, almost a mentor. He's going to be a mentor here to Xavier and Eli and whoever else in that backcourt. But there will be competition. That, that position is open for anybody. I don't want to say we're giving them that position. That position is open for anybody, as, as is every position out there. John, how, 
comparison that people make with Mo, just in terms of your coaching career, is obviously with Kevin Pitts at West Virginia. And I guess, what, what do you remember about sort of the way the offense flowed and functioned when you know you were in a situation where your center is probably your best player because you haven't really had that this much here. I'm I'm not going to say he's our best player. I'm going to say we got we got really I think we have a lot of talent on this team. Um, but uh, Kevin Pitsnagel a- averaged uh, 70 threes a year for four years. Uh, Mo had 30 or 40 this year, so we're not going to put him in that category yet. 70 threes a year. He scored 1,800 points. So, uh, but having a bit, let's just say having a big man who can shoot the ball like that. Uh, changes a lot of things. You can see per, the way Purdue's defense is, is uh, it was very helpful to have a pop guy um, because it's really hard to guard their big guys, but it's hard for their big guys to go out on the perimeter. So there's certain teams that that will work against, but you also got to make those shots, right? And so it, it's it's another option. You have, a, have five guys that can shoot, and our, our hope is that Davis and Teske can shoot in games as well. Summer, is there anyone who's uh, is Mo going to play with the German team? Is anyone Mo's going to play with the German team? He's going to, yeah. Okay. Play with and the how German long team. does Paul have a commitment? It's about a, it's about a five week commitment. Okay. Anyone else uh, have anything going? There, there's there's possible trips. You know, there's a lot of trips in the summer that guys can take. You know, I'd always encourage guys that didn't play last year, Austin Davis, Charles Matthews, make one of those trips. But there they there's money involved in, in that we cannot provide. For those they have to raise it themselves unless it's provided so um, when in doubt be in the gym and I would expect in July and early August when everyone is here uh, we're gonna have just tremendous practices but when the coaches aren't around just tremendous open runs in, in that in the, the Davidson player development center. Anything else? Good. Happy. Thanks, have a good weekend. Glad we could uh, do this. And, uh, thanks it. for everybody. Says I think that's officially the end of this year. <laughs> <laughs> and now we move on to <coughs> Team One Hundred Two. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good job,